Hi all, welcome to another Chess24 Banter Blitz. So it's around 11.30 UK time. Okay, uh, let me just show you the voucher code. King's Crusher gives you a whopping 15% off premium membership. So you can challenge the likes of the current world champion Magnus Carlsen, other amazing grandmasters. Uh, so getting live commentary from those uh, amazing players. And all the other perks of premium membership second to none coverage of events around the world so um check that out 15 percent off voucher code let's go to the challenge uh, screen today and the next colson <laughs> is the first challenge today so the next colson hi there okay let's try e4 i've been looking at the vienna game recently in a few videos uh, I'm going to play, actually hear those smith Mora gambits. Vienna game is against e5, but I'll play smith Mora gambit in this game. Oh, I do need to, uh, yeah, hope the, uh, the, the the board is okay soon. Hasn't changed on my thing yet. Just let me know audio and visual, of course. Um... Okay, so bishop c4. I'll go with h4 here. This looks interesting to play h4 for a moment. I hope I don't regret this. It's been a bit colder recently. Uh, the winter is on us. Um, so hg or h6 or bishop f4 maybe bishop f4 for a moment that d6 square looks pretty good to go into d6 black has weakened the dark squares a little bit uh, bishop d6 intriguing maybe that's that's a uh, interesting thing it's possible that oh yeah maybe I, I should have played h6 there's some some interesting um, ideas here Queen d2 maybe so I can castle queenside what do I need to play that what about just e5 or hg hg actually knight b5 now looks pretty tempting castle queenside am I getting in trouble castling queenside or just king f1 Maybe king f1 leave my rook on h1 activated play rook ad1 hmm not so sure here not so sure haven't got anything that concrete my bishops are loose piece as well here on c4 now okay what if I just I put the bishop here for a moment out of target from the from the rook knight g5 is is possible because of that pin, King, uh, rook h8 or e5 might be possible or queen f4 yes or rook h3 maybe rook h3 is uh, interesting for rook g3 an option of rook g3 <clears throat> so rook g3 um, is there the possibility of a queen cycle or something? Uh, rook g3 or knight g5 or e5 or bishop c2 maybe for e5 maybe bishop c2 for e5 so e5 here I've opened up that bishop Right, can I just take that off? I can finally try and win 
material. I can take on H6. Right, this looks pleasant for knight g5. So queen h8, queen f6, queen f7 is dangerous. Yeah, I think this is very dangerous now. Queen h8 or queen e5. There. Okay. Uh, let's go back there for rook e1, which gives knight f7 at the very least. And queen c7. Okay, I'll take that. Okay, thanks for the game. Uh, yeah, that got a bit dangerous. Uh, okay, so Area 51 on a three minute game. This is a very dangerous opponent. Uh, okay. Let's go. Try the Vienna game or something. Is it ready? Okay, so one flying saucer, two flying saucers, three flying saucers, <laughs> four flying saucers, five flying saucers, six flying saucers, seven flying saucers, eight flying saucers, nine flying saucers. <laughs> I was looking forward to this three minute game. <laughs> Because I've got white. <laughs> I've got white. And he's not here. I was looking forward to this so much. Okay. <laughs> I don't have to abort in the interest of the queue. Oh, I was relishing the challenge just then. <laughs> relishing that three minute challenge. Okay. Jetzel. Is Jetzel a London system guru? Oh, he's playing the Jabova. Jabova. Uh, well, Area 51 is flying saucers, yeah. It's the... Uh, there's a nice Joe Rogan interview to check out on Area 51 uh, from <laughs> um, as well, um, which I saw recently. Very fascinating. Uh, we've, we've had this before, haven't we? This kind of scenario. Me and Jets have had this... Jabova weird position before. Uh, I think I was just about okay uh, here. White is giving up something, that bishop. Now, e6 is tempting. Uh, or knight takes d5, in fact. Alright, but, but... I'm hoping I'm not getting slaughtered. Um, can I play queen b6? It does look a nice positional pawn sacrifice, which I've used myself with white quite often in the past. With mixed results, actually. It's not always as easy as one uh, might think. Um, Um, although, although, uh, it does seem as though I've got major congestion. Uh, yes, it does look scary, in fact. Okay. It does look kind of terrifying at the moment. Should I have... Actually, I feel I, I maybe I should have played that slightly differently already. Uh, with e5 and e6 as a counter pawn sack, just before I get absolutely massacred um a counter pawn sack to try and liberate my position okay 
so I'm trying to liberate my position. I'm trying to give a fight here. Bishop g7, knight e6, bishop h6, check. There's bishop h6, check, and bishop f4. Um, is that actually is that actually giving me uh, something? Maybe rook d6, trying to get my opponent's pieces to be slightly on the loose side here, if possible. Slightly loose pieces. Uh, I've got that bishop pair against the two knights. So my opponent's going to be a pawn up potentially, but um, but it opens up that bishop. I think that's the button. Yeah. Uh, there's d4 here as well. Or rookie 8. Maybe at the moment rookie 8 is interesting. I mean there's knight d5 as well. Does that run into bishop g7 though? Because then rook takes d5 after. So bishop g7 here looks... Uh, well, there's knight takes e7. Now, e6, there's knight b6 check. But then king c7, it gets a bit hairy, doesn't it? Or, or just taking there. Maybe e6 is the way to go. Oh, knight e7 check there, king c7. I'm just thinking rook takes, king takes, there's three pieces hanging. So knight b6, you know, I can have three pieces hanging, potentially. On knight e7, king c7, or knight b6, king c7. I think after rook takes, king takes, there's the, the rook, the knight, and the other knight all hanging. Uh, so this position, I'm hoping that there's three pieces hanging. So the rook's being attacked. King takes, there's three pieces hanging. It's like my king's family forking all of my opponent's pieces. Uh, so yeah, rook e6, um, there's king c5. Family fork. Okay, uh, that does hold things though. Okay. B takes. Is he held things? Or am I, am I looking for bishop g7 here? There's rook g5 after bishop f6. So I'm, I'm thinking. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. I, I think I'm getting too excited by nothing. Okay. I'm in a bad state, aren't I? He just does that. Okay. Uh, so bishop g7 for e5. Am I just a pawn down? He's next to pawn from me. <laughs> I'm just a pawn down. Uh, uh, after all that, I thought I was doing so well. He's giving me a pass pawn here though. This is interesting. Bishop d4, do I get a chance for bishop d4? And then king c7 on, oh, that's, that's a pass pawn. Okay, can I put some pressure for g5 coming up? Or c, or g5, or yeah, playing for g5 I think might be the way to go to try and blast through this f file. Get some f file, fun and games. Uh, well, okay, that's not happening. What about just trying to undermine with a5? So I want to play for c5. I was hoping for, to play for c5. Okay. Don't want to give two connected pass pawns that, that easily. There is a pass pawn over here though, so maybe it's worth it. And my rook's controlling a1. Okay. So this is getting interesting. So a2 is a threat. King going over here. King f3 to f2. My bishop's controlling against b6 right now. Do I get a chance? Or bishop b2? No, no, rook. We'll try and get him defensive against a2 potentially. 
and A2 is not an issue at the moment. What about against E2 though? There's Bishop B2 here. And then although well, these two connected past pawns look kind of scary. Now that B6 is on the way. So I'm wondering if I should just go back here or play E2 uh, or King E4 or E2. Maybe E2 stops. No, no, no I think I need to go back. Oh, I'm getting in big trouble here, aren't I? Uh, got to keep that block A surely. Rook A4 to D4. At least the bishop's nicely blockading at the moment. Oh. Oh, hang on. I think that spells big trouble. My rook is kind of. <laughs> what what's happening to my rook there? Oh my god. This this isn't right, is it? <laughs> oh dear. Yes, this isn't quite right, as far as I can tell. <laughs> yes, I seem to be two queens down. Apart from that, everything's fine. Um, I think he had mate in one. <laughs> oh boy, with queen c6. I don't think it matters anyway. Yeah, I think something happened there. <laughs> slightly wrong. Okay, slightly, slightly wrong. <laughs> that opening is actually kind of dangerous. Oh, yeah. Okay, well played. <laughs> that opening. Oh, man. I thought Jetsal was dangerous in the past as well. Why have we got another game here? Okay, I think one's enough there. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. He's 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 won before against me as well. Oh <laughs> Yeah, that was that was something. I, I lost the blockade. Potential. Uh oh boy. <laughs> Let's play H five here. Uh, can I play Knight Ace? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I guess it was a center pawn. A bit of a blonde there. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> German berserk. <clears throat> okay. Um, one berserk, two berserks, three berserks, four berserks, five berserks, six berserks, seven. Okay, we've got game. Okay, I'll try the Vienna game here. So a quiet version of the Vienna game. Uh, 
I think H3 to stop any use of G4. Uh, D3 for knight D5. Well, knight D5 is tempting. I'm going to get that tempo, I think. Use, use the tempo. Maybe C3 and D4. Okay, this looks as though I'm uh, getting a piece here. Um, so c4 and knight c3. Uh, King h2 and maybe f4 uh, coming up. B3 and Bishop D2. Bishop E3 and Knight B5 maybe. Or Knight, knight B5 here for Bishop A3. Okay, maybe uh, Bishop A7 is good for A4. Hmm. Hmm. Although B six, I, I may, maybe yeah, oh, maybe I'll get my bishop trapped. So I'll just take the knight instead, get the knight back because I think B six might be trapping <clears throat> the bishop. So a4, king h2, f4. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable plan. a4 for king h2 and then f4 is, I think, my main plan. Oh, there's bishop b6 here. Hold on. Bishop b6. <clears throat> okay, I think that's winning an exchange. All right, thanks, John Zuck. Okay, um... Talk Mandita. Okay. Hi. Okay, so Knight C6, I think. Now this Tango trying to provoke the Dark Square weaknesses. A little bit. Maybe e6 here threatens queen h4 for queen takes e4. I mean, it's a neat little trick. In general, um, can I win this rook? I mean, if he took, I can take with the knight. Here. 
right, so bishop f5, there's knight g5, I guess. Is that? What about king g6? Doesn't seem. Uh, or am I getting mated? <laughs> Might be. Um, although I can't see it. I can't see it. Bishop f5, knight g5, I'm tempted because I can't really. Immediately see a refutation. Ah, uh, okay. I'll, I'll risk it because it seems you know handy to play rookie eight here. So even though, okay, I think king g6 for the moment looks. Please tell me this is safe. <laughs> rookie rookie eight. Please tell me this is safe. Okay, so h5, h5, h5. Stop h5 from white. Rookie eight for knight d three. Or rookie eight for knight f three. All right, I think it's dangerous for white as well. Bishop G four seems tempting. So H five actually helps with that as well. So Queen takes F one is threatened. Right, thanks for the game talk, Medita. Yeah, that's. There's a bit of a dangerous uh, resource that uh, Queen A4 check. Okay, in in the tango, something to know about. Uh, so here's a Smyslov defense. I think someone's saying defense, not system. Smyslov defense in the royal. Pass. So I've been looking at a game of Smyslov recently, and um, one or two. He he was a fan of that uh, Vienna game I'm looking at at the moment. Uh, so was Laska. I'm looking at all the oh f four's uh, an issue sometimes with that bishop. Um. Yeah, like like yeah, I've had this a few times before. This bishop getting trapped. Okay, so that's that's good news, I think. Get a knight to g6. Uh, or to f4 later. Uh, I'm gonna take that. I think there's bishop d4 here, winning queen. Oh, thanks for the game, Ralph. Yeah, that that's tactically. Yeah, that's dangerous. Chess Obert. Chess Obert. Okay. Oh, that's an interesting avatar. Um, I'm not supposed to know that. Uh, okay, is that? How oh, is that a green? The Grinch or something? <clears throat> Knight g6, knight f6. Yeah, this I like this position because of the dark square play usually. I think that's okay. I've had this before. H five and knight h four. This is fairly dangerous, I think, in general. Or knight f four and g five. H five. That sort of thing. Just build up my pawns over here. Um, 
yeah, I had this with a lot of fun. G5, Queen E7, G7 or Queen H7. It looks to me quite dangerous build up here on the king side in general. Okay, so F5 for Queen H4. Yeah, I've had a few knockouts with this system. But, uh, okay, you know, maybe white can uh, defend here. Don't, not always not always working. I can gain maybe a key tempo with Queen F6 for H6 on D4. Or maybe, no, I'm not threatening that because of Bishop B5 check. Okay, maybe the root, though, is, is interesting. Queen F6 to H6. Um, would he treat that as a serious threat? Or just play King G2? Uh, uh, let's see. I, it can be ignored because there's Bishop B5 check. So King G2 would be... Um, would be interesting. I mean, uh, on King G two, uh, F takes maybe, uh, or is it F three? Maybe, maybe that's the better idea. Take, take, take. Uh, well, I, I think King G two. Yeah, unfortunately, is an interesting defense. Um. Ah, okay. Uh, maybe G5 here, trying to keep my pawns together. And then Bishop D7. Is that the way to go? Rather than F3, I don't want to lose my pawns in a hurry. Uh, G5, E takes King F7. I like this idea of King F7, trying to get my rooks into play. Um, or rook H3 on rook H1, is that something? Yeah, I, I don't like the idea of F3 particularly because of knight F3. Uh, I like the idea of, okay, that's, that's nice because I'm, f mm, there's, yeah, connecting my rooks is, is important. Hmm. Is it possible Queen E4 oh, or Rook H3 here? Rook H3, Queen H3. Queen H3, oh, Rook H3 for Rook G3. That that looks appetizing uh, for some reason to me. It's nice this cube of pawns here. I've got a cube of pawns. Strange, isn't it? Uh, but I'm thinking, I think Rook G3 is, is interesting. I, if I can get in that Rook G3 and try and get the other Rook into the attack, I think that will be very interesting. Actually, this opens up that diagonal. And there's also actually Queen B2 here is, is pedantic. Or even, I don't know, taking here for F4 is, uh, may maybe that way is, is interesting. There's a few attacking uh, options. I think one of them is, you know, Queen B2, uh, but there's like Rook B1. Another one is, um, well, what's going over, on over here with G takes and G4? There's a sort of inertia of pawns that I often like. So G takes and G4.
I think, yeah, G takes in G4. Um, uh, unless, you know, G3 for Rook H2 is also very tempting. I mean, I'll try that. Alright, so rook h2 for queen e5. In fact, um, rook h1, queen h8 is looks to be mating because um, king g1, queen h2, queen f2, king g2, queen h2, queen f2. I think I think this is mating. Yeah, it's, it's dangerous. I kind of like those positions. Uh, thanks for that. Yeah, Chesterbert. Okay, Dianov. Um, yeah, I think it was important not to allow the counter sack. Knight takes f three. I think that was an important thing for me personally to keep the inertia of pawns going, um, the dangerous pawns going, keep the tension of those going. Uh, rather than allowing a, a clarity kind of counter sack of the night. I kind of like this myself, this attack with f5 coming up is, is often quite dangerous. This um, grand, there's a you know, Grand Prix attack guru in, in on UK chess, he was mopping up the torments with this kind of Grand Prix attack against the Sicilian. Uh, he was often playing it with Bishop b5 though, not Bishop c4. But I think they're both kind of dangerous. Um, this looks dangerous uh, already. Knight g5 for um, Knight f7 or Knight e6. Or, uh, or queen uh, knight e6 rook yeah rook e1 check there's always um you know knight e6 check on king f8 Uh, yeah, that looks uh, that looks bad news uh, because of knight e6 jack. Yeah, okay, that's that looks too dangerous. Yeah, it's it's a very dangerous system that um, Grand Prix attack. All right, yeah, area fifty one. Okay. Um, okay, I have to try and uh, not get annihilated in the opening. I think that happened last time. It was not particularly nice. Can I try Banco Gambit or something? Right, this is this is the system which I kind of like trying to just ignore this uh, just play quietly with Bishop f5 just get the bishop out of the pawn chain I had a game against Plaskett in this uh, once um, casting queenside here interesting can I even take that there's no Media. Is there? Or oh, maybe there is. Okay, that is a bit of a tactical move. Uh, so I want to play knight c6 and rook c8. Or knight d7? He's going to play bishop b5. Maybe I have to play knight d7. It's a kind of tempo game for rook c8, though, isn't that? The queen on c3, I know, like hitting there, but knight d7, rook c8, maybe that's even better than knight c6. Can I get that tempo gain? <clears throat> oh, okay. Uh, don't particularly want to be annihilated on the queen side.
So I think I have to make that concession. Because knight d7, queen b7, I don't think it looks particularly appetizing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think I'd rather do this. Okay. Um, I put my king on over here. Maybe there's a little bit of pressure uh, building up. Uh, B5, B4, or F5, F4 is more kind of thematic for the pawn chain over that side, like French defense. For in the reverse, what you'd play against the French defense in reverse. Um, maybe B4 just to lock down the pawns over here. I would imagine G5 later is useful. Oh, is he going to play Rook C8? Oh, hang on. I should have stopped that, shouldn't I? Maybe there's King D7 anyway. My strategic break is g5 and f4. All right, he's not testing that at the moment. So can I play it over here for g5? Well, I'll play for g5. He locks it down or not? I thought he'd lock it down. Okay. Well, this is just better for me, isn't it? Rook h1 is dangerous. Rook h2 is dangerous. F4 first might be even better. Uh huh. Is is going to be win those pawn win those pawns? Whoa. Down on the clock, and I've got the center pawns. <sighs> okay, that's slightly annoying. Seems very dangerous now. Friending mate. Yeah, thanks for a couple of rating points for today. Thanks for that opportunity. Oh, it's not rated, is it? It's not rated. <laughs> is it? Is it rated? Oh, it was. Thanks. <laughs> I feel a bit better. I thought, <laughs> thanks. Thanks a lot. But I shouldn't care about rating. It's, it's for you guys I play. It's not for my ego. So, some would look at this stream <laughs> and see how de deflated as if my ego is on the line in every game. <laughs> Which is terrible, isn't it? I, I'm supposed to be doing an instructive commentary here. Remember that. Remember that. I must remember that. <laughs> There's another three minute game. Let's play this Knight E4 here. <clears throat> Okay, so I, I like this system. It's an equalizing system. Plaskett played against uh, this against me with uh, black. He just, just basically, you just ignore this uh, bishop g5 business, uh, naughty business. Uh, and you just sort of play it with like a French defense with a bishop outside the pawn chain. Uh, so I thought it was neat at the time. This is years back. I thought it was neat. Started using it sometimes myself, then I forgot about it. Uh, okay, I thought I'd bring it out today. Uh, it's very, very simple. It's not very, it's not, you don't have to know tons of theory. You just uh, ignore basically uh, what white's doing um, a bit. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, is F3 a, a major concern? I, I should I be worried? I'm hoping there's knight g3. Knight g3. I'm hoping on f3, knight g3. <laughs> okay, I, I, I think, I mean, it looks to me uh, fairly comfortable here. If I have rook c8 and knight b4, I mean, this looks as though. Well, there's knight f2 here. This is now a tactical liability. I was looking for knight f2 anyway. I think, unless there's any major check, knight f2 looks good or knight c3. But f2 is probably better against king safety. Uh, I think, no, this forks them anyway. It kind of forces the issue, doesn't it? Because it's forking. Okay, this is bonus points positioning. Is the bishops about a counterpart here? Why it's also compromised the light squares, so extra bonus points on top of that positioning for me, I think. But on the other hand, chess is a real pain. Horrible things can happen whatever position you have. But in general, this this looks like nice. If I'm clamping against e4, there's not even a knight c5 here. In fact, have I got like g5 for g4? This looks uh, as though it's going to be fun. So king f7 or king d7. Have I overextended already? Hang on a sec. What am I doing? Queen f6 might might be good. Um, and then castle queen side. He's got Queen H five check if I played um Queen G seven. If he plays knight G five Queen H two, but imagine Queen H one. No, I don't know, I'm trying to mess this up, aren't I? Okay, Queen H two and King D seven. Unless there's anything stronger. Queen H five trying to win that knight. Uh, I I think King E seven actually, and then that gives me Rook G eight. And there's also this nasty forcing move under a certain circumstance is going to be lethal. Bishop E two, but Rook G eight is also an immediate like concern. Rook G eight for that knight and G three beneath the knight under the knight. Rook G eight. Yeah, this looks. I don't know what happens here. What happens with this knight? Okay. Isn't there just queen h6? Pin and win. Okay. Yeah, um, it's a simple system. This <laughs> bishop g5. Yeah, please, all, all play this system. It's really quite good fun to play with black. All you do is bishop f5, basically. That's all, the only theory I know on it. You just play bishop f5. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't you just play it like a French defense e6 and c5 uh, as long as you don't get annihilated on the queen side okay I'll play the Vienna game here okay <sighs> chess is fun again okay bishop g2 knight g e2 
for some reason, you know, Lasker is just ahead of his time. I mean, he was playing this Vienna game with the quiet, um, the Mises variation, is it sometimes called? But yeah, I, I've seen a load of Lasker examples and all the other world champions are systematically checking their use of the Vienna game uh, with the quiet G3. And it seems to be quite rare uh, usage. Kasparov did beat Caruana with it. Um, Magnus Carlsen managed to lose the one game he did play with it. Um, uh, Fischer did have one game with it in a simul. He was using that Vienna game in the simul. Maybe there's just too much other stuff as options. So Vienna game really never took off. Uh, okay, so anyway. But I, I okay, maybe you know a position like this doesn't offer too much at the moment. I think Black's really done well to lock down everything. I should be worried, shouldn't I? I should be worried here. Black's locking down everything. This isn't much fun at the moment. Yeah, no, I I like Black's uh, you know positional play is is uh, the force is strong in this one. <clears throat> Queen e2. As Darth Vader would say in Star Wars, the force is strong in this one. Uh, knight f2. Okay, a takes. Okay, I'm getting sliced. Isn't that nice? Getting sliced and diced. h4, h5. Is that rather desperate? I don't know. Maybe it's worth giving it a go. I'm not proving any advantage so far. Would I? Can I tempt him to dismantle his own pawn structure? Maybe rook g1. Rook g1, I seem to be evolving something over here. Or am I? There's queen h4. It's a right pain. Maybe bishop f2, so queen h4, knight f5. Okay. Oh, there's e takes. Am I dropping a pawn now? Oh, it's become a gambit already. I'm, I'm dropping. A pawn. Oh no! <laughs> I'm dropping this pawn. But there's maybe there's knight e4 and bishop g3. It might not be the end of the world. Uh, I was I was just trying to parry queen h4. Uh, on on the other hand, okay, okay. I'm always testing this. Um, oh well, bishop g3 is a bit of a backfire on black because of knight takes d6, isn't there? Bit of a backfire there. This might be pos have some positives. Um, I don't want all this pinning stuff to happen. So here, all I wanted to play was rook g1. I get in all this trouble. Is there knight f6 here for queen d5? That does seem to pick up the knight on b3. Any queen f4 after this bishop g3? I think knight f6 for queen d5. Am I am I pre moving? Am I really pre moving that? Hell on, I shouldn't pre move. Only in bullet one should pre move if one has to. Hang on. There might be some better option, I imagine, uh, potentially theoretically. Nope. Okay. So queen b3. If queen f4, bishop g3. Queen b3. I'll just pick up this knight. I could have also picked up the other knight. I've just realised. Okay, with rookie eight and queen c six. It's good that the bishop's holding e one because queen d two. Well, actually, rook f two, queen e one. There's rook f eight check for bishop e one. 
In fact, that's been tested here, isn't it? Okay, so rook f2. If he plays queen d3, um, I think I'm okay there intuitively. I'm giving up, hang on, two rooks for the queen. But I'm already a piece up, so maybe it doesn't matter on this occasion. I like I like the notion the forcing move notion just to keep uh, limited options for the opponent. So queen e1, uh, rook f8 check for bishop e1. If if I get a if I get a move in, I'll probably play a uh, rook e8. Oh. Or can I just um, double the rooks here? If I just double the rooks here, or should I take on f? Should I take on e8 for queen f7? There's rook f8 there. Okay, I think that. Mm, okay, all in all, this looks as though it's worth a punt. <sighs> C four, Queen A four. Is it any any use? Okay, quick Queen Queen F seven here runs into Rook F eight. Does it? I've got F2 reinforced, so maybe, you know, I can bounce via F7 to, in fact, why can't I just take that rook on C8 here? And if bishop E5, we'll worry about that later. Let's take this guy. That does mean there's no rook f8. There's knight f2 that drops the rook. There's rook f2 goes into c4, but there's queen c2 there. If I wanted to protect d1. Right. The forcing move is... Um, well, there's actually rook f8. Uh, king g7, queen g8. King h6... I'll try and calculate this. Um, it, it's probably not needed. Um, I can probably just play... Uh, Bishop e5 does bring his knight into the attack. No, hang on. Okay, I, w I will start with uh, this, I, I believe. maybe So queen f7. Forget queen g8 for a moment. There is actually bishop f4 here. I don't want to give this knight, you know, entrance into my king side that easily. Okay, this looks dangerous. Let's check, mate. Is the bishop's covering g4? Yeah, I, I thought I was worse uh, mid game there. Killer cats. So, uh, okay. Tango it is. Yeah, I, ooh, oh, I like this already. Uh, oh, definitely <clears throat> have a good feeling about this position. Um, I'm starting to think about this as um, sort of like playing the other kind of fence on the other side of the board. Because in the other kind of fence, you're weakening light squares when the knight goes over there, tangoing the other direction. Um, here, you're kind of weakening the, the dark squares of, of white. So I, I think of it like a sort of, yeah, other kind of fence a bit. 
Um, there is a little trick with knight f4 because if king e, if queen e3 knight g2, and if queen f2 knight d3, and if they end up playing queen d2, then um, I, so yeah, I, I I will use that trick here. Knight f4 trick. It's it's an interesting. It's a point scorer on uh, a little bit sometimes. I mean, it's a tempo game. Queen d2, uh, queen d2. I mean, it's it's useful in its own right. The queen going to d2 is maybe it wasn't desirable. I, actually, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to castle. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. This this will do. This will do. Yeah. Maybe it's got some, it's got some perks anyway. The rook wants to be activated. Uh, okay, that knight on e5 is is often juicy. I'm threatening knight f3 check here anyway. So if where's white casting? Casting queen side. Um, bishop g4. Aha, uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, rook. Oh, play, play play for rook b eight here against white castling um, queen side. Um, and conjure up something after that. I'm not entirely sure actually. The knight does look good on e five to me. There is knight c4. That is an interruptive move, interruption move. There is knight c4 here. I, I don't know if my knight's that unsafe. If I took that, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Oh, knight e3 looks looks nice. Hmm. In, in some respects, knight e3. I'm not. I'm not really sure, actually. Okay. So, um, what about just queen e7? Uh, queen e7 looks looks actually more sensible in some respects. And bishop, bishop here. All oh, right, the king's coming out to play. Is that put some more pressure on this e4? I think knight g4 is going to be good. Just to get the knight back to e5 or uh, stuff like that. Knight g4 for queen f6 looks dangerous. Um. Okay, so yeah, yeah. I think just doing something about this knight is the first step, and then knight g four looks good for rook h six to f six actually, and um, well, there's. Yes, rook f6 looks uh, plausible. There's king g2. Would I be worried? h4 is also interesting. King takes check. Uh, looks to be a lot of dangers there for the king. Is that is that really getting the king mated? Might be. I, I, I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just losing a piece here. Um, I'm thinking this is more dangerous than rook f6 because the rook's, you know, looking at h2 from h6. If I go to f6, all right, so it's been tested here. Um, This looks rather adventurous. K 
hängen. Can my rook make an, an entrance into this party here? With rookie five uh, coming up. Okay, I, oh, I don't want that king escaping. Um, if I play rook g6 for rook g2. Knight e3. Queen h2. I just don't want the king escaping. Uh, that's a priority of this attack. Uh, if the king makes a run for it over there. Whoa, well, let's put the screen back. Oh, sorry about that. I just want to try and stop the king making a run for it. Um, I think there's, that runs into rook f6. The common square f1. Okay, thanks, kill the cat. Yeah, it got a bit dangerous there. Um, okay, uh, Hoodry. Okay, Smith Morrigambit. Play with bishop d3, bit of spice. I'm hoping my opponent doesn't know this as much. This is not supposed to be that good. If I say that, if I whisper that, it's not supposed to be that good, bishop d3. <laughs> but if if opponents improvise with d6, it's very, very good. If they improvise with d6, very, very, very good. I would imagine. Um, I have played that bishop d3 move before with the idea that um, e5 for e6 sometimes if the knight's going to d7. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, bishop d3 is just uh, a little thing you can throw in to blitz. Uh, okay. Actually, yeah, I'm not so sure about this. <clears throat> okay, so I'll be worried. Rook H four is intriguing. No, I, I don't know. Yes, I don't know. Okay. King F2 for Queen H1. Unless I'm getting annihilated. Well, I hope I'm not getting annihilated. Uh, it looks as though maybe Queen H1. Well, 
on 94 maybe 94 trying to keep more tension going more pieces more tension and then something like Mm, let's put the king away from here. This knight e3 is a real pain. Okay. Mm, this doesn't look good. If, if I took an um, rook h1, there's a threat of queen h7 at least. On any check, there's knight f2 there. Okay, that's interesting. Ah. Oh. Is there a snag here? Hold on a sec. With knight g5. Was he playing knight f2 check? King g2. Knight g5. I'm hoping there's a flight in the ointment. Right. Check, ninety four check. I'm not sure there's any other check anyway to go with at the moment. Uh, rook f1. Oh, there's, there's, oh, there's rook h8 happening. That's not very pleasant, is it? Um, There's knight f2 here. I see. Knight f2. Mm, it's over, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I, that seems to have been well refuted, well played. Yeah, it's uh, a bit unstable, the opening there. Okay, all played. Friedel. <clears throat> okay, I'm playing white for a change. Uh, I'll play knight c3 here. Knight f2. And, okay, is there this move instead of what I'd normally play? Uh... I think this is interesting. If I cast them F five, that looks like fun. For F takes a knight G five. Okay, knight G five coming up here, or queen to G three, and then that looks dangerous. 
There's knight d6 check here. Mm, yeah. Okay. Um, bishop g5 just to stop. Was that running to f6? Maybe a4 to try and dissuade castling queenside. Okay, I don't think at the end, at the moment the A file doesn't look that hearts knight h four maybe for f seven or knight f five but I'm looking at f seven there so knight f five actually to e seven looks good. I can kick the queen out of that diagonal, then um, queen f3 check is going to be good. In fact, the a file would be useful. So queen d7, queen f3 check, uh, and then rook a8. Okay. This looks dangerous for b5. Um, if ever I get any queen f3, queen c6, there's rook a7. Uh, so b5. Is that queen d5? Oh, there's queen d5. Okay. Uh, I'll try and double these rooks while I can. Uh, just, yeah, for rook a7. Rook a7 looks dangerous. Uh, I think the idea of bishop f4 especially is to ramp up the pressure. What am I imagining? Okay. Um, Is the pressure being ramped up? Uh, huh. uh, okay, I don't know. Queen h3, f5, queen h7, is that a ridiculous thing to do? Probably asking for trouble. Hmm. It's a clear route here. Um, queen g4. <laughs> is it sort of weakening the dark squares, isn't it? Queen g4. If he has to play f5, maybe I should just be content with that slight weakening uh, of the dark squares. Okay. Uh, rook a8 check here looks as though it's remarkably. Dangerous. Oh, except he's got the queen on um, over there. Uh, that doesn't work. Okay. Um. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> ah. I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll try this. This move. Okay. Hmm. And this way can move. Queen G four. K 
getting a bit short on time now. Still no killer blow yet. Is Rook A8 check here any good? Yes, it might be. Um, uh, can I calculate that? Oh, um, <laughs> uh, no, uh, check, check, king d6, uh, queen d8, check. Okay, I'm gonna lose on time here, aren't I? Queen, queen f3, queen f3 for a moment. Queen b7, for rook a check. Or what about rook a6 for taking and then trying to queen this pawn out of interest? Well here I think there's a queen c8 around the corner. Or even worse, that's just mating, isn't it? Okay, oh, finally found a way in uh, just about, about to lose on time. <laughs> 28 seconds, okay, thanks. Uh, okay, dangerous opponent there. Cobra. So, Cobra. So against the king's engine, which transpose into a king's engine fincetta variation. Oh, with, with C3, okay, okay. This seems a little bit potentially, I would say potentially um, passive if C4 is going to be played later anyway. Okay, we've got a sort of. Um, King's engine attack. Mm, with C3 instead of C4. What does that really mean? Does that mean my queen side's not under so much grave danger as usual in the King's engine? I'm getting my sort of attack over here. One thing I'm wondering about is uh, the perk of C3 is, is B4 uh, as it goes. Uh, okay, complete F4 maybe, holding E5 for the moment. Be careful not to allow E5 from white. Well, I, I kind of like the uh, basic plans here. If I have um, knight F6, uh, rook F7, uh, bishop F8, rook G7. It's H4, that sort of thing. Is it actually worth playing? Okay, that's that's the perk of C, the pawn on C3. And if I did, did this, uh, try and open up this G file. And um, try and soften this up. This gives me an option of queen b6 check. Um, okay, c takes for a moment. Right, e4 is interesting to try and dismantle g4. I think I will play that. Try and dismantle g4 a bit. Just step out there for a moment. So g4 looks slightly loose now compared to what it was. This check's kind of ruled out by c5. Um, H, hg and knight g4 looks like dangerous. Although my king's also in the line of fire as, as that series goes in the line of fire. Uh, my king's in the line of fire. Is that, should I be really worried about that? Or not? Oh, 
Okay. Well, both the kings are kind of vulnerable. I would hope it's not just my king. Is that um, bishop? Well, do I need to play king g8? Out of interest. King g8 or h3? King g8 or h3 for a moment. Safeguarding h4 for a moment. Play King G eight to unpin that pawn. Um there's King H two coming up. Oh there's Rook H seven there if I don't want to lose that pawn in a hurry. Okay, I'll keep that pawn for a moment. There's Bishop F three, there's Queen D seven. If I get to play, um, surely Queen D7 is the way to go there. With the idea of Bishop E7 and Rook F8. Trying to expose some tactical liabilities on the F file with Rook F8. There is also Bishop H4. With tempo queen f1, and there's no, no, that's too dangerous. I think, as I mentioned, trying to get this f file working. Okay, as over here is interesting. There's also queen a4. What's going on over here? Is queen a4 quicker than a b? Do I need queen a4 all of a sudden? Bishop e5, my rook is held by the bishop. Queen a4 looks interesting. Trying to get a few checks around here. Queen b3. Whoa, whoa, okay, it's good. I've got, I think, Bishop F6. This takes them rookie eight here. There's Queen B4 here, unless there's anything better. Queen B4 seems reasonable in the circumstance. There's rook e5 for rook h4 here. Yeah. Or maybe simpler, just rook h4. Yeah, that got really kind of hairy. It could have gone either way, really. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Well plays, everyone. Yeah, gave me a hard time this week. Um, that's cool. Okay.
Uh, thanks, you know. Okay, I hope uh, you have a good rest of the day, rest of the week. I hope your chess is doing well over the board, etc. Online. Have fun. And see you next week. Okay. Thanks so much.